Hello everyone, hope you are loading well. So in this video, we'll discuss the first problem of lead code weekly contest 343. It's an easy level problem, but the accuracy is on the lower side. You can see it. Uh, so let's see what the problem is asking us to do. So the problem name is determine the winner of a bowling game. So the problem says that you are given two zero indexed integer arrays, player one and player two, that represent the number of pins that player one and player two hit in a bowling game respectively. Okay, the bowling game consists of n turns and the number of pins in each turn is exactly 10. Assume a player hit xi pins in the ith turn, okay? So the value of the ith turn for that player is 2 into x of i. If the player hit 10 pins in any of the previous two turns, otherwise it is x of i only, okay? Now the score of the player is sum of values in their n turns. Got it? So what we need to return? We need to return 1 if, if score of player 1 is more than sc score of player 2. We need to return 2 if score of player 2 is more than score of player 1 and we need to return 0 in case of a draw, okay? So, like in this example, we had 4 turns, okay? We had 4 turns, both the player played all the 4 turns, okay? Like for example, this first turn, second, third, fourth, first, second, third, fourth, okay? Now, let's calculate what, what is the score of each player, okay? So, in this case, we have values 4, 10, 7 and 9, right? So, it says that in the higher term, in the higher turn, if the player is hitting x i pins, okay, so the the score will be x of i, okay, the score will be f x of i if in the previous two turns he or she has not hit ten pins, okay. Otherwise, it will be two into x of i, okay. So like for example, this is first turn, second, third, and fourth. So since this is first term, it is not true, right? Since this is the first term, score will be four plus. Just see what happens here. Here it is ten why 10 and why not 20 because in the previous in the previous two turns here we just have one turn okay if you consider this in the previous turn the score is not 10 right or, or i would say the the number of pins hit are not 10 right so the score will be 10 only plus here we come to 7 now just check in the previous two turns uh, has the player hit 10 10 pins yes the player has hit 10 pins so the score will be doubled it will be 2 into 7 Similarly, when you come to 9, just check in the previous two turns, uh, have we hit two pins? So just see, this turn and this turn, right? These are the previous two turns for this index. So yes, we have a 10 here, right? So again, 2 into 9. So this is the score of first player. So it is 4 plus 10 plus 14 plus 18. That comes out to be 46. Similarly, you calculate the score of second player. It is 6, 5, 2, 3. Okay. So obviously we start with 6 plus check for 5. Do we have a 10 in previous two turns? No, add 5 only. Plus check for 2. Do we have 10 in previous two turns? No again, that is 2. Then again check for this 3. So 3, right? This is the score of player 2. That comes out to be 16. So 16 and 46. Obviously score for player 1 is more. So you return 1, right? Similarly, what you do here? You have uh, 3, 5, 7, 6. So we can see we do not have a 10, right? So you add all of them, you get 21. However, for this, what happens? We have 8, 10, 10 and 2, right? So we start with 8 plus this is 10, right? Then when you go here, do we have a 10 in previous two turns? Yes. So the score will be multiplied by 2, right? 2 times 10. Then again, when you go here, do we have a 10 in previous two turns? Yes. So plus 2 into 2 getting it so total the score will be 42 and hence instead of so we have 21 and 42 you return 2 here right and let's let's take one more case again this is the case of a draw so in this case your score is 2 plus 3 no 10 right so 5 for player 1 and 4 plus 1 that is 5 for player 2 so this is a draw you return 0 i hope this is clear totally implementation based problem but most of the folks where are they failing they are failing here right because okay let me show you the code what happens you have n turns, right? You have n turns. So this is first turn, second turn, third turn, fourth turn, and so on. So for these turns, you can run a loop, right? You can run a loop. And for these turns, probably you can uh, calculate it out of the loop as well, right? For, for edge cases, right? For example, because for this position, you do not have previous two turns. You just have one turn, right? So if you have a 10 here, right? Or if you have a 10 here, so these are some tricky cases that uh, most of them miss, right? If you if you are not running a generic loop, right? Let me show you how it happens. So just see what what did, what this code does. 
I see how many rounds are there. I initialize S1 and S2 as 0. That means the score of player 1 and player 2 is 0. Now just see what I've done. This is previous score of player 1. Okay, that means if I am at the i-th turn, so this is i minus 1th turn and this is i minus 2th turn, right? For player 1, previous score 1, previous previous score 1, right? This is for player 1. Similarly, we have the same variables for player 2, right? Now what I'm doing, I've generalized it and I'm running the loop uh, for, for all of them. I've not added any if and else conditions outside the loop that, okay, if index is 0, uh, you just add the score if index is 1, you do this stuff and that, right? Because that, that is prone to errors, right? Now what we have done? For the ith round, add the score of, add the current score um, for players 1 and player 2, right? This is done. This is done. Now see, what is the previous score for player 1? So I, I, uh, I check that. Is i minus 1 a valid index? If it is a valid index, uh, see what's the previous score for player 1. Similarly, previous, previous score for 1 is... If i minus 2 is a valid index, so what do you do? You see what is the previous to previous score of player 1, right? These are the two variables. Similarly, you do it for player 2, okay? Now what you do? If the previous score of player 1 is 10 or the previous previous score of player 1 is 10, you again add this score in the score of player 1. Why? Because we have to multiply, uh, we have to multiply the current score, right? So I have already added it once. Right by default, that will be added once, right? However, if the if the last two pins in any of them you had a ten, right? So you add it again, right? So it becomes two times pi, right? One one here and one here, right? So two times pi. Similarly, check for player two. In case uh, if the previous two turns in the previous two turns you you have a single ten, right? Even if you have a ten in any of them, you again add it, right? So this is a generalized code. However, if outside the loop, you keep on checking that if i equals to 0, do this. If i equals to 1, do this. Then you can miss some of the cases, right? So this is a better way to write uh, and probably a cleaner way as well, right? Um, and then finally, what you do, you check that if the score of both the players are is equal, return 0. Else, check if score of player 1 is uh, greater, return 1. Else, return 2, right? This is, I've used a couple of ternary operators here uh, to avoid the if and else check, right? So... Yeah, that's it for this problem. I hope you learned something new from this video. Do support it by giving up a thumbs up. Do subscribe to the channel as well. Also, in case of any queries, mention that in the comment section. I'll revert on each one of them. Thank you. Take care. Bye-bye.